Hi, welcome to product review by Watt Hour. In this video, we are going to see how we can use this three cell labeled as 40 ampere lithium battery charger. These are all exactly the same with different shapes and different manufacturer. We're going to connect it to three 18650 lithium batteries. Then I'm going to explain the module, all the inputs and outputs. Then I'm going to look at each component and try to bring up the data sheet. After that, I'm going to explain how to prepare the batteries and connect them together. Then I'm going to solder the BMS to the battery. After that, I'm going to measure the voltages across each cell to charge it. What type of source you need. That so I've set the current to 2 ampere here. Then we are going to apply charge to the batteries at different currents and check it. After that, I'm going to try to connect a load and discharge the battery and see how it behaves. I, I will also test the over current protection, over voltage protection and under voltage protection as well. And then we are going to do that short circuit protection by connecting the output of the battery short circuited by visiting our website watthour.ca. This is a complete detail and explanation of this module, tests and a lot of other information that you will learn from. But if you just want to connect your battery and start using it, I have separate short video. The link for that video is below this video in the description. This tutorial I'm going to review and see how we can use this 3 cell lithium battery charger. Uh, you might see it in different shape and, and even different color. But these are all labeled in uh, on Amazon, AliExpress or eBay as 3 cell 40 ampere. Some of them at the back will have different writing model, but the, these are very identical components with few, even these three could be the same or maybe this is the same. Some of them have very little variation in, in resistance selection or uh, different MOSFET, but they are, they are the same design. The first job of this module is to charge your battery, each cell separately and individually. It controls amount of voltage, making sure the battery is not damaged, over voltage that will not happen. It has a charger and also it has a protection system. Under voltage protection, when the voltage reduces, it will be protected. This has a limit of 40 ampere and if something happens that the current that is drawn from this more than 40 ampere, it will protect it. Also it has short circuit protection in case the output power is short circuited, your batteries will be protected. We are attaching this to three cells, soldering it and also at the end we will have only two wires that you can connect to your charger or you can connect it to your load. Here is what you expect from a BMS or a battery management system. The first thing is you will select it based on of number of cells, one, two, three or a uh, uh, number of cells and then you will expect that the, it should do the balance charging. What it means is that each cell is charged individually with separate voltage and current. And then the maximum charge current is another important factor. It is the amount of maximum amount of current at any moment you can charge the battery. Overcharge protection is another feature when the battery is filled it should stop the charging and then over voltage protection is when higher than expected voltage is connected it should protect the battery sometimes people connect um, a value that they forgot to set properly so it should protect it maximum load current is that uh, the maximum current that bms and that supply to the load under voltage protection sometimes they call it over discharge protection uh, it is the minimum voltage BMS allows each cell to operate with. Uh, for example, below certain voltage, it gets damaged. The battery will get damaged. And for example, minimum voltage for some of the uh, uh, lithium batteries are set to be 2.4 volts. So below this voltage, the cell will seriously get damaged. And then it should have also short circuit protection. When the output is short circuited, it should shut the output off. 
And there are other factors as well, for example, operating temperature. This is ambient temperature where BMS is operating in. And also another factor in many cases, it will be the current consumption, which is the amount of current that BMS needs to operate. For example, when you see a, a BMS which says 3S40 ampere, it is a BMS for 3 cell with 40 ampere current charge. So this is referring to the amount of charge that the BMS can supply to the battery. Some of them have labels as, uh, for example, B- minus at this point, and then B1, and then B2, and then B plus or B3. And this one also has the voltage uh, written beside it, for example, 3.7, 7.4, 11.1. But this one, if you pay attention here, it says B minus. It has started instead. The other one, it was on the other side. This one has started from left side, B minus, and then B1, B2, and then B plus instead of a power. In both cases, there is the load or power or charge will be connected to this P plus, P minus. And the same way on this one, as you can see, minus is on this side, and then cell 1 will be connected between these two, and then cell 2 between these two, and cell 3. On some of these, you will see that there is a S1, S2 test point where you can connect a header or for some purpose you want to check it. And here are the components. This is the BV3A. The label is actually the component is HY2213. And here is the data sheet for this BV3A, which is HY2213. One cell. And here are the features of it 4 to 4.5 volts that overcharge protection and overcharge release voltage 3.8 to 4.5. And standby detection voltage is 2.7. And with this precision, when it operates, it consumes 2.5 microampere. And here is the label that you see on the chip. This is BV3A, 4.2 volts, plus minus 0.25. So I will provide the data sheet. There is a typical application with in-channel MOSFET. And we have at the bottom here, we have a, a current sensing resistor which we have on the module. The next component is this 10CB. It is labeled as 10CB. This is a battery protection chip. These three chips are the overcharge protection. The actual model is HY2110. This is one cell battery protection package. This is the model that is used. The 10CB refers to that, this portion. As you can see, the overcharge voltage, voltage detection when it reaches to 4.28, it is detecting as overcharged and overcharged release. When, it, when the voltage drops back to 4.08, it releases it. Over discharge detection, when the voltage goes below 2.1, it protects the battery. Charge release, when the voltage reaches back to 3 volts plus minus 0 0.1, it releases it. In some of the modules we have DW01 chip. This is the one cell lithium ion or polymer battery protection chip. As you can see the overcharge protection for this one is 4.3. One when it reaches back to 4.1 it will turn it off. When the voltage goes to 2.4 volts it will kick over discharge protection and when the voltage back reaches at 3 volts, it will shut it off. But on this module, this is 0 0.03 ohm current detection resistor. This is 0 0.05 ohm resistor. In this black module, we have 0 0.005 ohm resistor for current detection. And these are the power MOSFETs. And here is the, the power MOSFET. This is 2SK3919. Here's the data sheet for the 2SK3919. 
drain current for this one is 64 ampere the other module has this d472 and here is a data sheet for d400 there's also n channel mosfet with rated current of 100 ampere or you see this one 72T02GH this is also a MOSFET and here is a data sheet for the MOSFET 72T02GH from advanced power the drain current is 62 ampere here is the typical application so you understand how it works this is the battery terminal these two this is the positive of the battery but the negative goes through these two MOSFETs here so this is B minus and power and these two MOSFETs are controlled by over discharge protection and over current protection this is a current sense resistor so it controls the current from here the bias of this uh, MOSFET is being controlled or switched on and off to con control amount of current and here is the schematic diagram it has been labeled as 3S and then 25A 25 ampere our module is exactly the same with the exception that you might see different model of MOSFETs this has been uh, labeled as AOD514 and I have seen in our modules one of them has 524s and the other are different which I have just shown you here is how the batteries are connected this is B- minus or 0 volts that is B plus or 11.1 uh, that's the third cell so the first cell will be connected between this point and this point B1 that's the cell 1 and then between this point and this point we will connect cell 2 uh, the positive is at that point the negative is at the top of cell 1 and the cell 3 will be in here between positive of cell 2 and the positive will be connected at B plus which is labeled with battery plus and power plus we have another pin here power minus so pay attention that as I shown you on the module the power minus is not sharing with the battery minus the power plus is sharing the same point and this portion these four are doing the over voltage protection these are for over current protection and uh, over discharge protection you can, you can easily look at this these two resistors 0 0.05 ohm uh, resistors they are in parallel they are connected to source of this these MOSFETs these four MOSFETs are all connected source of all these four MOSFETs these pins are all connected together and for these four pin the sources are all connected together like this so the sources are connected and here they go from this point to the negative terminal and the sources of these will go to the P minus and the drains are all these four and these four are all connected together like that so they are connected the current must pass through these four and through these four to this point so either this group this group will be turned off or this group will be turned off the whole thing will be shut down this group will be turned on and off using the current sensing from this point this is the negative and the positive is on this side when the, when the current passes it we will see a voltage proportional to the current when it reaches a certain threshold to pin 2 it will control the pin 1 which will turn on and off this transistor and subsequently it will turn on this transistor and as a result these, this will control the gate of these four MOSFETs and it will shut it down until the current goes below the value and when over voltage protection happens if the input voltage is high or the battery voltage is increased then it will control via this transistor here these uh, four MOSFETs will be turned off if this is turned off again the current will not go through the negative terminal to charge the battery this on this side we have three charge balance chip HY 
2213, which is labeled as BB3A. This is a version of this for different manufacturer battery. And this is the negative here, and the positive is here. And we have a resistor of 100 ohm, which in some module is 68 ohm. It is connected to the uh, drain of the MOSFET, and the source is connected on this side. When this turns it on, this will be short circuited, and this resistor will be across the two terminal will drain about 70 milliampere current slowly will balance it and here on the module we have these three balance charger for each cell we have one balance charger and there is a MOSFET and there is a resistor they are connecting together meaning that when the voltage reaches According to this data sheet, BB3A, when the voltage reaches 4.2 volts, this is called overcharge detection, it will turn on. So this will turn on this MOSFET, and this MOSFET will connect this resistor across these two pins of the cell, and this will drain it. On the data sheet also, it shows that pin 6 is connected this, to this MOSFET, and that is the resistor that I've just shown you. So when this is turned on, it will connect this side of resistor to this point, which is to the negative. So this is as if we have the resistor connected to the positive and negative, and will drain the current. As the current is drained, the voltage will also proportionally will be reduced. This is a 68 ohm resistor. If you calculate it with uh, the voltage of this one, 4.3 volts, you will see. And if we do 4.2 divided by 68 ohm, you will see that it will draw 61.7 milliampere. This will draw 61.7 milliampere until the voltage becomes 4.19 and it will and it will turn off. So we have the same thing for all modules. When the voltage reaches at 4.19, it will be detected at this pin and then it will shut it off. And here I have another module here, it says 100 ohm. It, it is labeled at 101, that's 100. Also on this module, we have 100. This can be also done using this uh, balance charger. These are the balancers sold separately for different number of cells that you have, three cells, four cells, five cells. So you can buy it and connect it directly to balance the battery. And this is exactly the same chip, the same MOSFET driver, and there is a resistor. Boom. And if you calculate it, you will find out that this will drain less or more depending on how big you put the resistor. The smaller the resistor, the higher the current, the faster the balance. For this demonstration, I'm going to use this lithium battery, NCR18650. This is a lithium battery from Panasonic. The battery that I'm using, this NCR18650B. So this is the nominal voltage, 3.6 volts, would be 4.2 volts. Let me when you when you use the batteries for this for this charger, the batteries are expected to be connected in series, so we can have three cell in series, meaning. Uh, we start from negative and then positive and then negative positive they will be connected in series uh, this is a first battery let's call it cell one the negative is connected to a point where it is labeled as b minus or zero volt and the positive is connected to a point which is labeled as b1 3.7 volts so one of these or both so the positive is called b1 and then when you add the second one in series the positive from the cell 1 is connected to the negative of cell 2 so and then the voltages will be added from the positive this is called b2 and this is 7.4 is when you add 3.7 plus 3.7 of the second one it will be 7.4 volts and then to add the third one the positive of cell 2 is connected to the negative of cell 3 and then the positive is connected from cell 3 to the b plus or 11.1 volt. This is called series connection for three cell battery. And here when you connect it in, in a straight line, th this battery is cell one, the negative is to a point where it is zero volts or B minus, the positive is B1 or 3.7 volts. And then you put your second battery on top. As you can see, the negative of cell two is connected directly 
placed on uh, uh, positive of cell 1 and from positive it is called B2 or 7.4 volts as before the voltage is 3.7 plus 3.7 that is 7.4 volts and if we have the third cell then the third cell will be placed on top of cell 2 and from the positive we have battery plus or 11.1 volts and here for our purpose I'm going to connect it like this so the first cell is connected to B1 or 3.7 volts and then I'm going to put the negative on this side in the previous one the negative was on the other side so the negative is very close here they will be connected still the voltage doesn't change put one negative and positive and these two are together but from the tip of this it is connected to B2 or 7.4 volts and then I'm going to put the other one close to this. If you pay attention here, positive and negative are close here, and positive and negative are close to each other. And the tip of the cell 3 is B plus or 11.1 volt. To get started, let's put one negative and positive, and these two are together. Other these two, making sure that they are straight like this. I solder this portion. Now I have to tape it so it is held together and as you can see this is a positive and that's a negative that's zero and that is the 11.1 volts or three cell output. Now the soldering is completed without any charge let's check the voltage here and if I check one by one 3.76 volts at first cell and then if I go to the second cell 7.53 and then to the third cell 11.2 and here is on the charge module I've already put solder here at these points which I'm going to solder it uh, to the batteries this is the negative terminal and that will be my B minus I'm going to start soldering from here this goes to B1 point will be B2 this point will be the B plus so this is the beginning and that's the end so B minus B plus is also matching make sure that this happens and then I'm gonna solder the power in here here I have soldered this to the battery from these points and also I've soldered these two wires for the power make sure to cover the one of the tip because there might be sparks so until you connect it to something cover it so this battery is now ready. I've soldered three voltmeter on each cell so we can see the cells in terms of voltage. As you can see, they are all fully balanced. So how are you going to charge it? What type of source you need? That is the most important one that I'm going to explain. For this one, you need to have a module that has constant current and constant voltage. So majority of uh, voltage power supplies they are already constant voltage but you need to have constant current. What does constant current do is it will limit the amount of current. because if you overcharge these uh, batteries or if you go above uh, depending on the specification above 2c 1c is the capacity the, the capacity of this one is 3400 milliamp per hour i can charge it at 1c less than 1c or 0.5c or maybe even 2c 2c is twice as that but in some cases of fast chargers you can do even four but you have to look at the specification of the battery But regardless, you need to have for these, you need to have 3 amperes enough because if you go for 1C or if you want 2C, you need to have 8 ampere charger minimum to make sure that whatever current is needed, you can supply it. And then you will set the, the, the voltage, the maximum voltage, for example, in a device at 13.6 volts because this is already protecting it. So you can connect, let's say, 14 or 15 volts and then you will set the current the most important one for you is to set the current 
let's say you want to charge it at uh, one ampere set it at one ampere and then connect it the rest will be taken care of by this uh, BMS and here is a quick example on how to do the charging using this module I have separate video for that the link for this is below this video I'm setting it to 14 volts that's done then you have to set the current let's say you want to charge this with 2 ampere make this short circuit and then set the current so I've set the current to 2 ampere here and then disconnect it now it is full it will not allow above 2 ampere connect the battery to that pay attention here to the current and it shows it allows only 2 ampere constantly charging it I've set the voltage 13.3 volts and current as 1 ampere so slowly it will charge it the system will automatically will stop it now everything is ready this is the input voltage that is coming for this that's the current sum of all these voltages in here and you can see each cell voltage let me now connect the power as soon as i connect the power this will be the current that goes to the battery and this is the input voltage meaning that the charger here this charger will adjust it accordingly so we don't have to worry about it but i'm gonna play with this and here i'm going to connect it now and as you can see charging continues and we are getting 4.8 ampere and the current is decreasing slowly because the voltage is increasing each cell needs 3400 milliampere hour so in one hour this should get 3400 now if we go by 6.9 then it will be much less let me turn this around and show you the amount of current that goes through the batteries is in here now if I measure the voltage here across these two resistors 13.7 millivolts so 13.6 we have 0.0.5 divided by 2 So we have a resistor of 0 0.0025, that is 2.5 milliohm resistor, these two resistors. And I is equal V over R, this divided by that, so 13.6 shift milli. And then divided by answer, that was the answer, 5.4 ampere. And you can see here we are getting 5.4 ampere, so we can calculate it as well. and let's i've set the current now to 6.2 ampere because this is twice the c rating turn it on now let's let's just for sake of argument i'm just setting it at 20 ampere and turning it on i am turning it on i think it will you see because the voltage dropped and the system will shut off immediately let me put a 10 ampere let's just test it and see what will happen to the voltage so now it is 10 ampere 10 ampere hour and that's the voltage 3.5 go 11 i just increase it 12 as you can see the voltage has dropped but still it is holding all current is passing through this and after 2 hours 25 minutes of the voltage this will not kick in until it is 2.3 over this charge protection kicks in at 2.3 volts
And as you can see, the protection has kicked in and current is now zero. The over discharge protection on the module has kicked in and as you can see, the current is now zero. After discharging it, let me now connect it and see how much current it draws. As you can see, it is now charging at 8.11 ampere, and that's uh, my power supply voltage. There's a voltage across the battery. The higher the charge current, the shorter the life of the battery. So I set it now at 3 ampere, and I'm going to leave it like this. Now let's test the over voltage protection in case when you connect extra voltage to this module let's see if this BMS is protecting your batteries. I'm going to connect this voltmeter at the two power terminal so you can see the voltage and here now this is the 17.2 volts that I'm going to connect. This light is connected to that source and now the voltage across the battery is here, 12.2 volts. I'm going to connect it to 17 volts. Now if I connect this battery to the 17.3 volts, as soon as I connect it, as you can see, the voltage at the input is 17 volts, but the voltage across the batteries are exactly the way they were. So the internal protection, the over voltage protection of this worked and protected the batteries. Now I'm going to test the short circuit protection. It is running, so let me do the short circuit. The bulb is off, the circuit is short. As you can see now, it, it does not release it until I disconnect this and connect it. So it takes a few seconds. Now let's do this and disconnect it. It knows the load is connected regardless so it will not reset it so you have to disconnect and then connect it will be connected so keep that in mind the button here when i press that thank you for watching this was the review of this 40 ampere three cell lithium battery charger if you learned something and found this useful please thumb up as this will help my video in the search algorithm of YouTube. If you have comment or question, please post it at the comment section below. I try to answer and reply. And don't forget to subscribe so you get updates of my upcoming videos. In this video, we are going to review this XHM240 battery capacity tester and discharger for 18650 lithium battery and other type of batteries. I'm going to explain the module, show you how to use it. Then we are going to test the capacity of lithium battery for the period of five or six hours. I'm going to 